it looks a bit of a walk down to the castle, doesn't it? Soon that's a university there, isn't it? A university. Didn't we? Did we? Yeah. Oh, all right. That was a university or college or whatever it was, wasn't it? No one there. Yeah. Well, there was a car park over there. Oh, that's right. That's right. It's extra car parking, wasn't there? That's right. Yeah. That's very different. You don't see many sheep in a car park, do you, really? No. Very handsome sheep as well, aren't you? <laughs> oh, no, Pops. <laughs> different, it, Pops. So this is a bit of land that needs uh, grazing. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? I'd like to a lawnmower. You're a lawnmower, are you? <laughs> Me, I'm just a lawnmower. Yeah, it's a dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> the woods that planted a castle that established a town. We've got one of those in the uh, woods just behind us, haven't we? Yeah. It's Damn noisy this, things. Uh, woodpecking all the time. It was a bit of a novelty to start with, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's very busy. Yeah, that's all the walks around the castle, isn't it? So you can walk from here all the way round. Wow. All the way up there. Well, so you were here. Oh, we're there, are we? Okay. I think we'll be walking down, down there. there to the castle, yeah. won't we? Yeah. Okay, that's been established then. Off we go. Mm -hmm. Open today. On 10 a.m. I think it actually closes at uh, four four o'clock. Right. Going from ten till four. What an impressive front, isn't it? Yes. best preserved medieval castles in England. Over 900 years old and still fully roofed. It was Anne Clifford's ancient yew tree in the early Tudor courtyard, tea rooms, shop and picnic area. And over 60s are £7.70, adults £8.70. Okay, let's go and get some tickets. Right, here we are. Are oh, quite a few kids about, so I apologise for any any noise or anything like that. Hopefully, they've all got something to do useful. Yeah, we've got the sheets, haven't we? We've got a sheet as well, haven't we? Yeah. Entrance tickets between 1626 and 1629. Lord Henry Clifford created this renaissance grotto much in vogue on the continent and that was that that was a renaissance grotto okay the archway frames a dominant watch tower with a clifford flag flying proudly overhead that's the clifford flag up there it date castle dates from 1090 was ma massively strengthened in 1310 by Robert the first, uh, first Clifford Lloyd of Skipton. Right. Do remember it. Proceeding towards the castle, we ascend Lady Anne's steps with a stone tablet above. Well it's kept lawns. Lady Anne that did all like Broom Castle and yeah. Castle I assume so. Yeah, what? Lady Anne yeah. Clifford. Yeah. There's only one Lady Anne Clifford I know of. <laughs> mm. The steps. Come on, Pops. Okay. Right, 
Must be a tablet up there. Yep. Oh, I feel dizzy looking up there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read a bit more now. So, so she made substantial restorations after the Civil War. She was actually born here. Oh, was she? No, no. Yeah. She died at one of the other houses of the lived, didn't she? Yeah. So this is how people would have entered the castle 900 years ago. This is the famous yew tree, isn't it? Is it? No, that's not the famous yew tree at all. No. Of course it is. <laughs> so, we'll start that bit again, shall we? That's the famous yew tree. Yeah, we're in the picturesque conduit court. Charming Conduit Court was so named because it was a termination of the spring water supplied to the castle. Mm. You've got to go to keep to the route. You've got to go up those steps. We'll have a quick look round here, though. glass in these windows. Okay. So it says the date on the drain pipe. Date on the drain pipe. 1659. 1659? That's an old drain pipe. Yeah. So keep our keep to our route we go forward and ascend the outside steps on our left. The lead in some stones suggests they may have come from Skipton's Market Cross, which was demolished in 1840. Mm. So we're walking up Skipton's Market Cross then. I don't see any lead. Okay. Oh, still. Hey. This one washing her head. Yeah, she's in a hurry, aren't you, Pops? Poppy? Poppy? You in a hurry? Yeah. <laughs> so we're in the corner of the banqueting hall, 1390 to 1450, which was the social centre of the medieval castle. Here, yeah, Lord and Lady Clifford, guests and retainers dined each day, usually before noon. Still quite impressive, isn't it? Yeah. The hall was not used for dining, it was entertainment or business. It was a gloomy place before the bay window or the solar was added in the 15th century. Bay well, this is this, isn't it? Here. I can imagine. Is it there? Sorry? Oh, there's bay, yeah. oh, there's bay window here. So it says the hall was the heart of every large medieval household. Everyone ate together here, used for ceremonial occasions, for play, and often for sleeping. The hall's windows faced the sun within the secure central courtyard. By the main entrance, a great wooden screen would have been placed to reduce drafts. By, at the east end, on a platform, the Lord, his family, and his guests ate at the high table, entertained by minstrels in the window recess. Alright, oh, so this was for the minstrels, isn't it? Yeah. The heating was by charcoal burning in the wheeled iron basket in the centre of the hall. Yeah. Before returning to the hall, we must inspect the medieval kitchen and privy. That's very bright. We must. Is 
the serving hatch there. Yeah, it must be the serving hatch, and this must have been the kitchen. Oh well. Two fires. Yeah. Massive fireplace to our right, where once cauldrons of stew once simmered, whole deer or oxen roasted over huge log fires. Fireplace was equipped with a weight driven spit. During the Lady Anne's rebuild, in severe damage by the cannon fire and Civil War siege, probably at the domed beehive oven at the other end of the room, were added to the medieval hearth at this time. Charcoal was placed in the ovens when the stones were hot. The charcoal was pulled to the front and the bread was baked inside. Privy. I found the privy. Yeah. Straight down. <laughs> no messing about. The long drop, it says. The long drop. <laughs> so a heap of soft, spongy moss took the place of the modern toilet roll. <laughs> Something to look forward to, isn't it? Kitchen harder work in the hot steamy kitchen. Kitchen boy main job to turn the spit for hours on end. Rolling dough for bread trenchers used instead of plates for pies or rolls. Preparing vegetables. Uh, carrying a dish of pheasant. Pots for honey and spices. Churn for making butter. And a sack of flour is carried in. Wine. Most people probably drink a sort of beer or mead. Preparing sausage and goose for the waste to be thrown out, bread ovens, there's a lot going on there. It's a very busy kitchen, isn't it? Yeah. You could use this today, they probably, probably do, don't they? Yeah. So we're going into the withdrawing room. So you come in here after you've eaten then? Yeah. Yeah. Do a bit of withdrawing. So it would have been the main living area for L Lady Clifford, her children, and a retinue of gentlewomen. A beautiful bay window looks northwards and must have been ideal light for needlework, which occupied the ladies of the household. Mm. It's quite a view. Mm. Nice house there. Yeah. You can see the river, can you? Yep. Yeah, very nice. Commanding view to the north and the thickness of the castle walls remind us here of the castle's great strength which proved in the Civil War. It withstood a three year siege. Half a half that time after the Battle of Marston Moor, it was the only remaining royalist stronghold in the north of England. So that's the thickness of the walls, walls there. Yeah. You just put you in front of it for, for scale. Front of this one? Yeah. That's the, just stand by the wall. That's it. That's how thick the walls are. About five jennies thick. <laughs> About nine uh, poppies thick. Withdrawn, right, yeah, okay, the view from the withdrawing room, according to tradition, Mary, Queen of Scots, was temporarily held prisoner in Skipton, and this is a view towards Scotland, she must have many times contemplated. 
So that's north, yeah. yeah. She would have looked to the north and freedom. So, up, turn our back, we're going towards the monument room. Now we know what monument is, don't we? That's where they kept the valuables. So the Lord's day room would have skipped and could afford a little space for his own comfort, but with the Tudors on the throne, the tenth Lord felt able to build a new, build a new suite of rooms well lit through the window, though the, the window still faced safely inwards towards a central courtyard, and it was used for the Lord and Lady's personal use. Later, there was direct access to the long gallery for the reception of Henry VIII's niece, Lady Eleanor Brandon, first wife of the twelfth Lord. Both her sons died in infancy. It says, had one lived, he might have succeeded to the throne of England. Oh. He didn't have such a nice view, did he, in the year? No. Monument room showing the levels into which the parliamentarians reduced the outer walls. Doubly secured where castle monuments or deeds were kept. So what's that then? Is that in which way? I'll sort of just stop for a minute. Mm. Yeah, right, okay. Hang on. Ah, so this is the monument room. Is it's not known for how many centuries the castle or documentary records were kept in this room, though they were secured from thieves by locks on a strong door and the removal of a second entrance by a spiral staircase from below. Ancient parchments were not protected from damp or from mice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Had a fire in here. That's the, obviously the other way out. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. When the author of his History of Craven Whitaker came in 1805, he was dismayed to see the sport, poor state they, they were in. Oh, yeah. Retracing our steps back into the Lord's Day Chamber, we've seen that. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wait for me. Sorry. Are you talking to Poppy? Poppy. All right. With the window behind us, turn right into the adjoining room, which is in here. It's funny, all the time we were in here looking for that monument room. Yeah, it was below us. It was below us, and she wanted to go down those stairs. Oh, Poppy knew the way, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, so this is the Lord's bedchamber. So the bedroom of Lord and Lady Skipton. And one of the last probably the last of all the lords who slept here, George Clifford, 13th Lord of Skipton and 3rd Earl of Cumberland, Admiral and Commander of the Elizabeth Bonaventure against the Spanish Armada. First to bring the news of victory to Queen Elizabeth, two years later he became the Queen's champion, father of redoubtable Lady Anne. His fine tomb is to be seen in Skipton's parish church close to the castle's main gate. It's a big bedroom, wasn't it? That's probably where you kept all your bits. It's probably hanging space. Hanging space, a wardrobe. A wardrobe, yeah. Right. Somewhere for your cushions then. Somewhere to put your cushions, yeah, yeah. for your makeup bed. Yeah. Well, I'm off down here. Okay, see you later then. This is a fantastic castle. We haven't even said if we can go down here yet. Here we 
you're in the watchtower middle floor now, aren't you? Yes. That's a relief. Wouldn't want to get lost. Well, she's on her own tour now. Hey, Poppy, she come on. She's going the right way, so... <laughs> you get overconfident, Poppy, you know. This is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So, do you stand on there if you're watching in here, then? I don't know. This is, uh, this is the... The walls, these are the original walls, weren't they? And oh, obviously, I see. They yeah, down. yeah, they probably put something wooden on there, a table or something. Now, while watch was kept from the battlements above, the relief guard no doubt slept here. It shows the thickness of the original walls and the levels to which they were reduced or slighted after the castle was taken by Parliament in 1645. General Lambert, re responsible for gathering labour for the work of slighting, wrote to Cromwell that such castles were still a danger, so slowly was the work proceeding. The men, he said, come late, go early, and stand at idle while they are there, while they are here. Okay. Lady Anne Clifford soon gained permission from Cromwell to rebuild on condition that the walls were weaker, the roof unable to bear firing cannons, and her new wall can be seen here on top of the slighted original. She's said to have given Skip some special care because it was her birthplace. Oh, this is the original wall. Then maybe those. Yeah. Yeah, they must have reduced it and opened it up. So I'm sure for Castle she was given permission to do that, aren't she? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they probably thought she was no threat then. Yeah, I think it said that in that castle, no threat. Yeah. That poppy's going up the spiral staircase. Go on then, Pops. You just keep blind. A bit narrow these steps, so watch your step, literally. Right, pups, that's locked. What's going on in there? Oh. Right. Mm. Nice view of the town there. Poppy, we haven't looked in here yet, come on. So this is the watchtower top floor. So you've got commanding views over the main gate and the countryside to the south. This was the castle's main lookout post. All trees in front of medieval castles were felled to avoid surprise attacks. On the flat roofs were stone slabs on which fires could be lit so that boiling water or oil or molten lead could be poured onto the attackers below. Much Scottish cannon was brought here after the Battle of Flodden in, 1350, in 1513, at which the 10th Lord took a major command at the age of 60. It's appropriate that by kind commission of Lord Clifford of Chudley, the Clifford flag flies today over a castle that was their northern stronghold for 350 years, Poppy. <laughs> yeah, so it's just saying, uh, commanding view from the top of the watchtower. You've said that, haven't you? Yeah, you would see the hills beyond. Yeah. So as if that was, that was still north that way, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I suppose you could see them coming the other way. But yeah, you've got tremendous views out of there. Let's have a look. the parish church over there I guess. These trees wouldn't have been here then would they? They wouldn't have wanted trees in here. Poppy. Poppy's had her photo taken. Poppy look over there. Poppy. Over there. Cheese. Cheese. 
Cookie. Say biscuit. Biscuit. Treat. <laughs> right. We're leaving the watchtower by the west door. Yeah. We immediately descend a single flight to the conduit court. Right. Individual stairs lead up to the first and second floor, but there's only one flight there. Okay. Yeah, I can't go up there, Pops. It's a bit tricky here with a dog, camera. Narrow these steps. Go. Mind your head here as well. And back into the court. Phew. Okay, so we're going across here now. That leads us to the oldest part of the castle. Okay. No money. Poppy, straight ahead. In you go. Ooh. A bit spooky in here. It says we now bow left across... Oh yeah, sorry, I read that bit. Through the doorway, left, and then forward into the Norman North fighting chamber. Go on, Pops. There's a step there. Yeah, mind that step there, it's a bit hidden. Yeah. Poppy. What are you doing in there? So this is the Norman fighting chamber. It says from this room on the north side of the Norman gateway, the guards could cover both the approach to the gate and lost it. Post, post the gate and a wider field to the west and north. The twin gatehouse towers were part of the first stone castle built here, incorporated into the even stronger castle built in 1390 by the first Clifford Lord. The north facing arrow slit was blocked by an extension to the medieval kitchen and after the end of the Wars of the Roses, the existing entrance with its flight of steps was built between the gatehouse towers in place of the drawbridge. So you're in the drawbridge? where you'd shoot your arrows out there so you could look that way and you could look that way except you can't now because <laughs> there's a big wall there there's a big wall there there's so another arrow thing in there yeah which there. was the one that's blocked up I think yeah yeah so that was an arrow slit there blocked up blocked by the extension to the medieval kitchen Right, we're going down the dungeon, yeah, Poppy. I'll wait up here. It's alright, it's better than those other steps. Yeah, right. Lost Poppy then. So from time to time, dungeon was used for secure custody of prisoners and no records of escapes. Conditions were austere with no natural light or fresh air, but one prisoner asserted in his trial that he'd never fed so well as in Lord Clifford's custody. It says there are no records of torture or other ill treatment, though from time to time the blacksmith was called in to make special leg irons for a prisoner who could not be allowed the slightest chance of escape. Incarceration was rarely for longer than 13 weeks in which they which separated the quarterly court sessions in York. So you wouldn't have spent more than 13 weeks in here, Pot. Good to know, isn't it? Go on, up you go. I like it in there. She don't mind. <laughs> We're in here now then? Yeah. Gotta go back to the courts. Okay. Right, okay. We yeah. Go on then, back, no, to the, back no, to the court. Back to the court, Pops. This way, come on. Thought about the famous yew tree, haven't we? 
Yeah. What's it say about so the famous yew tree? Over nine feet in girth. Nine feet? Yeah, that's what it says. Are you sure? Yeah. That's not nine feet in girth. Oh, that means going all the way around, doesn't it? Yeah. Not, not the, uh, the circumference. Yeah. Yeah. And it's planted as a sapling by Lady Anne Clifford in 1659. So, 1659, this was planted. Wow. Just same time she put that bit of uh, drain pipe up. There. Yeah. What does it say the date on there then? Right at the top. Oh, I never can see up there, am I? Oh, yeah, I can see it now. <laughs> Where now then, Poppy? You two want to stand on the tree, isn't there? We'll like take a picture, couldn't we? So we're going into the wine and beer cellars now. Ooh. Oh yeah, you can see oh, yeah. that. You can see yeah. this as a wine and beer cellar, can you? Yeah. Yeah. Fit a few bottles in there, couldn't you? A few barrels. About fifty barrels there. Yeah. And the bottles go in there. Oh yeah. That's good, isn't it? So much to keep all your wine. Big, bigger than my cellar. And there's actually two rooms here. Yeah. Okay. And what was it saying? It was saying that when King Edward I, that's Longshanks, isn't yeah. it? Stayed here in 1292. These two rooms were one. Okay. During restoration, five silver pennies of the 13th century fell out of a hole in the wall. Oh, all right. What's that then? I know there's a big hole there. Well, this is um, it's lead, this isn't it? What's it say on the wall there? Let's talk about five silver pennies again. Okay. Found in the wall here. Alright, in this wall? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it was the. Alright, okay. Only the Lord and the steward would have a cellar key. The soldier and servants drank beer. Large quantities were needed. It was brewed in this room and allowed to cool in the large lead tank to be put into casks. Right. They probably didn't realise how dangerous lead was, really, no, did they? No, yeah, lead. <laughs> the view out to the north again. This takes us into the new kitchen then. So when was it made? 1680 to 1900 years. Okay, so this is actually in use till 1900? Yeah. Wow. It says you notice the different ovens. Yeah, so charcoal ovens, did you say? Yeah, um, yeah, charcoal heated stone stove yeah. and the iron range of 1840s, which used coal. Okay. So that's from 1840 then. Yeah. You'll be all right. Poppy, now let's just go in here first. Go on. Yeah, so this is the monument tower, used for the storage of castle documents or monuments. Another of the massive towers built by the Cliffords soon after Ed Edward II brought them to Skipton in 1310. Slightly smaller than the watchtower, its walls are equally thick. This major strength enabled 300 men under Sir John Mallory to withstand a besieging parliamentary army for three years. 
and the inevitable surrender on the most honourable terms. Yeah, you can see how thick the walls were, can you? Breezy with that. Yeah. Oh, Pops. Pop is leading the way again. So this is the curing room, so it's where they had dried meat, salted or preserved, sorry, dried meat, smoked or salted for preservation during the hard times of winter. It says during the 1680s a sink and a bread oven were added. Earlier this room formed, earlier this room formed part of the suite added by the 10th Lord for his own use. A niche for crossbowmen in the massive outer wall of the castle dates from a much earlier age. Big fire. And the sink. Still obviously had the arrow slits. Yep. Right, so we're going in the ground floor of the watchtower now. steps down. Early castles were rectangular in plan but the Crusaders discovered in the east how much better the round towers were for withstanding a battering ram. King Edward II granted Skipton to Robert de Clifford in 1310 and Anne Clifford recorded in her diary that he built the strongest parts of the castle including this tower with its four metre thick walls and later in Tudor times, when war was thought to be a thing of the past, fireplaces replaced arrow loops and fine windows looked out onto courtyards. Yeah, you can see how this was once an arrow slit. So I think this is the last room in here. This is a Norman fighting chamber. South. Yeah, Norman fighting chamber south. <laughs> so the arrow, arrow loops face south as well as originally covering the entrance itself, presumably. The entrance is to the arch, isn't it, out there? Okay. And notice the cunning squint which allowed a defence to shoot in the back of the invader who had reached the courtyard before the portcullis could be low, lowered. I assume it's there, it's kind of there was a fireplace. Fireplace, well that faces the portcullis, doesn't it? Oh, that's the same there then. Oh, it's, it's that, it's here. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, so if you were in there, you could then shoot someone coming in. Oh, I see, right. That. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that faces the portcullis, that way. Yeah, because it's through there. <laughs> okay. There was another one here. So Bridget, it's been covered up by a fireplace, hasn't it? Yeah. They must have opened up the fireplace to show that. Right, I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, it just says now a final glance of the court when we go back through the ancient Norman arch. I'm just going to tangle myself from Poppy. Right, go on then, Pops. Yeah. Oh, it's well worth a visit. Well, Definitely. Interesting, yeah. You enjoy it, Poppy? You enjoy it? <laughs> Not talking to the camera. <laughs>
have a look around the grounds. This is a well worn step. Oh, yeah, they are a bit, aren't they? That one's not, but this one is. Yeah. It's a load of feet on it. Yeah. Wasn't it there? Yeah. Oh, that's impressive. Hmm? It's impressive. We seem to have the place to our own ourselves, isn't it? Thick. Well, you can see how thick the walls were there, can't you? Yeah. And the arrow slits. Quick look at the church. That's quite an impressive church as well, isn't there? Have a look in here, Poppy. Oh wow. Oh my goodness, look at this. There's the font. The ceiling. This is the ancient chapel of St John the Evangelist. Yeah. 13th century. 13th century. bricked up. Hmm. What's going on there? I'm trying to read what happened to it. Right. Uh, oh, I'm going to have a read. Really okay. So I'll try and distill all that down into about three words then. So it's impossible to date it. It was probably some years after John and Magna Carta, 1215, built of, red, of reddish sandstone. And it fell into disuse after the Civil War. Yeah. It was a wedding held, when did it say, in 16... 1635. 1635, when Richard Lord Dungate Garvin was married within it to Elizabeth Clifford heiress of Henry Lord Clifford and afterwards the 5th Earl of Cumberland after the break in the chaplaincy through the effects of the Civil War the chapel fell into disuse. Okay. Yeah, that's a shame isn't it? Yeah, it used as a stable or coaching house. Yeah. You can actually see some sort of like rings on the wall there. Horses? Oh, for the, up there, yeah. Yeah, yeah well spotted. For the horses, a little bit of an ignominious end to what would have been a fantastic parish church. Yeah, yeah you can see the place for presumably putting the hay, the, the uh, hay through there. Oh, yeah. yeah, you've got to walk the horses through there, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
It's a shame, isn't it, Pops? <laughs> Go on then. Very pleasant. See the canal down there, can you? Yeah. Isn't that canal or it's a river, isn't it, down there? Yeah, it's a river down there. 